Now, we've been talking about behavioral data. What about all those cells I started talking about? What are the cells doing in the reorientation task? Well, this wasn't known until very recently when an awesome paper was published just, just uh, six months ago or so. Um, and what they did was they did a version of the reorientation experiment while recording from place cells in the hippocampus. Okay? Other people have recorded from head direction cells right about the same time. Um, but I'm going to describe the place cell. Okay, so what they do first is they don't hide um, stuff in a corner. We'll get to that in a second. They just scatter, I think it's chocolate um, granola crumbs or something, like evenly throughout the whole box. So the mouse is doing what a mouse loves to do, which is like go around and sniff and find little chocolate crumbs, okay, all, all around the box. And that's good because it enables you to map the whole place field. You want the, rent, the mouse to go all around the box so you can map his place field with your electrode that's in a, next to a hippocampal cell. Okay, so here's the chamber. It's got nice vertical stripes on one end and it's rectangular. This is the classic reorientation paradigm again. Okay, so mouse is foraging in the box. Okay, you for each trial, you take the mouse out and you disorient him. Turn him around in the dark a bunch of times so he doesn't know which way he's facing. And then you find, then you map the place fields when you put him back in. And what you find is that the place fields are systematic. So here's the place field of one cell in that box. That, that, um, that cell fires when the mouse is in this corner. That's what that red thing means. Everybody get what these pictures are of? Okay. And here it is on another trial in the same corner. This is a different place cell in the hippocampus of the same mouse doing the same experiment on the same trial. So this is a case where they're recording from at least two cells at once. Somebody asked me before. Okay. So this cell has a place field in the opposite corner systematically on these two trials. But that's just two trials. What happens on the other trials? Sometimes they're flipped 180 degrees. So the cell that used to respond in that corner now responds in this corner. And the cells that used to respond in this corner now respond in that corner. Does everybody get how this is just what a place cell would do if it's using the shape of space, not using the symmetry breaking information? So the place cells aren't using this information. They're just using the shape of space. So this is a kind of neural correlate of this reorientation phenomenon that was described decades before these data were collected. Okay, everybody get that? But there's a couple more things to notice. First, when this cell flips from that corner to this corner, this cell does too. They all go together, right? And you've probably had that experience. When you come up from the subway in Manhattan, especially when you first think you're going one way, and then all of a sudden you see something and your whole world goes boom. It's, it's really like almost sometimes you feel like you're going to fall over. It's like whoosh, right? You guys have been through that, right? It's amazing. All of your cells are flipping at once. They're all linked. And you see that from the fact that when these guys flip, those guys flip. They all do that. Okay? So that's what's going on in your head when you have that experience. You get turned around. All your place cells are flipping. And your head direction cells are flipping too. Okay? They're all talking to each other. They're part of a circuit, and they're all coordinated. Okay? Okay, that's all cool, but how does it link to behavior? Is it really connected to the behavior of going to those two boxes? Well, yes, it is. Okay, so now, experiment two of this study, now they do the classic reorientation task. You put some food in a corner, you take the mouse out, you disorient him, you put him back, you see where he goes. Okay, so it's not just foraging in the whole area, you see where he goes. Okay. Um, as before, you find that a given cell can flip 180 degrees from trial to trial, just like this. It can be up here on some trials and like down there on other trials. Okay, so that's just replicating what they found in the first experiment. Okay, now the question is, since he's trained to go find that, where does he go look? And what does it have to do with the place cells? Well, the answer is the corner that he looks in is absolutely predictable by what the place fields are doing. In fact, what the place fields are doing before he even starts to go look for the food. You put him in the box, before he even starts toward a corner, you can see what the place fields are doing. Okay? Um, and in another paper that I didn't have time to incorporate in here, they've done very similar experiments looking at head direction cells and grid cells, and they all behave the same way. They don't have quite the same tight link to behavior, which is why I'm telling you about this experiment, but they, are also, um, they also behave the same way. So 
um, what you see is that um, on the trial, so here's some trials where the rodent first looked in that corner, okay? So just like before, sometimes they look in that corner, sometimes they look in that corner. 50-50, they're not using the feature information to break the symmetry, they're just using the shape of space, okay? So that's what we've been talking about all along. But what you see here is on the corresponding trials, when behavior flips from one corner to the other corner, so do the place fields. Okay? So this whole thing is linked. This beautiful long-standing set of behavioral studies on reorientation are now linked to the behavior of uh, hippocampal place fields. They all go together and the place fields tell you which way the mouse thinks he's oriented and hence which place he's going to look for um, the food. Okay? Yeah? If the mouse then like goes the wrong direction initially and then later finds the food, does the does it flip around? Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. There are experiments where, not exactly like this, but experiments that are done in the more kind of standard place field mapping thing where you have a rodent in an arena and you have these cue cards on the distant wall that can serve as a, as a beacon. It's like north or whatever, right? And you can move those cue cards around and the place fields will track. How fast they move around, I'm not totally sure, but pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. So that's a really beautiful strong link between the behavior of the cells um, and the, the animal's behavior, right? Now notice I'm talking about this whole navigation thing in part because it's as close as we get in human cognitive neuroscience outside of really low level perception and motor stuff where you have uh, particular brain structures that do different things, particular neurons that do different things and where you can start to imagine you could almost like wire up a circuit to do the whole damn thing. Right, so people are tr starting to do that. There are computational models that follow the properties of these neurons and that mimic a lot of the navigational abilities of humans. It's not quite the whole thing, but they're getting close, okay? I haven't given you all that. I've just given you a few pieces, right? So play cells are thrilling and wonderful, but in a certain sense, they're not a full account, right? It's like a face selective cell. Okay, what a cool thing, but how the hell did it get to be face selective? How did a play cell get to be place selective? So this is cool and tantalizing, but don't confuse the existence of these things with a full mechanistic account. I haven't given you that. The field basically isn't quite there yet, but it's, it's really close, okay? It's still, these are very, they're gonna be very important pieces of the puzzle, but there's much to be explained in how each of these cells gets their behavior and how they talk to each other to enable real world navigation. Okay, so, um, all right, so this is just a, uh, summary of the four kinds of cells. Um, there are the place cells that fire in a given location in the environment, direction cells that fire when the animal is oriented in a given way, border cells that fire when the animal is, new, is near a navigational boundary, and grid cells that fire in this hexagonal grid-like pattern as the animal moves around in his environment. Okay.